G'day guys and welcome to this video. Today we're learning how to write haikus. But what is a haiku? Haikus have been around for hundreds of years. They originally come from Japan and they focus on seasons, nature and other natural things traditionally. But of course now we can change that up and we can write about different kinds of things if we want to. They're one of the shortest kinds of poems and they capture kind of a moment in time in the author's mind. But before we talk about writing haikus, we first need to think about syllables. What is a syllable? Well, a syllable is a part of a word that contains a vowel sound. Any time that you open your mouth is generally when a vowel is in a word. If we slow down how we speak, we can hear them pretty easily. Let's try it. Syllable. So we've got sil, which has an it sound, la, which has an a uh sound, and bull, which has an uh sound. Every word can be broken into syllables, and even if that's just one syllable. Why are syllables important for haikus? Haikus have a very specific syllabic structure, or number of syllables in each line. Haikus are made up of three lines. The first line is made up of five syllables, the second line is made up of seven syllables, and the third line is made up of five syllables as well. Now keep in mind they are syllables and not number of words. Now let's look at a haiku. This is October's Gold by Paul Holmes, and it thinks about autumn. It's written by somebody in the Northern Hemisphere where their autumn's the same as our spring, so you could imagine this being called April's Gold if it was written from a Southern Hemisphere perspective. Let's read it, shall we? Like crunchy cornflakes, gold leaves rustle underfoot, beauty in decay. Interesting. I could, if I wanted to, split all of these words into their syllables and then count them. So we've got five, seven, and five again. I'm going to put these in these boxes. These boxes might help us to be able to count the syllables if that's something which is a little bit tricky. So notice how some of these words are split into multiple boxes. That's because we've got one syllable in each box and some words have got more than one syllable so we need to split them apart. But let's put it back together as how we would usually write it. I really love this haiku. Even though we don't have a lot of space to work with, you know, we've only got 17 syllables and we need to work within that, we can still convey a lot of information and meaning. Here, the author is really able to give us a picture of walking through autumn leaves. He includes simile and visual language, which are things that we'll be talking about over the next few weeks. But by using those, he's able to really give us the meaning of what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like to walk through autumn leaves. And if you'd like to, you can have an experiment around with using simile, metaphor, figurative language, visual language in your haikus. Might be a little bit tricky, but see how you go. Often haikus are written about nature, seasons, natural things. Not all the time, and we can change that up, but in order to get some seeds for writing poetry, you may want to go for a walk, you might want to sit in your backyard, you might want to look out a window, or just look at your writer's notebook for other seeds for your haikus. To summarise what we've talked about today, haikus are short, three-lined poems, the first line having five syllables, the second line having seven syllables, and the third line having five syllables again, and they're often about nature. 